blistering, stellar pace. These are just some of the adjectives being used to gaslight us about the economy. The Commerce Department is now reporting that fourth quarter GDP growth last year hit 3.3 percent. That's much higher than the 2 percent Wall Street consensus estimated it to be. It's obvious that while the Biden administration has ditched the term Bidenomics because of its negative connotations carried by voters of both parties, that they're still relying on the economy overall to be a winning message for this year. Probably because the economy has always been President Trump's trademark, and so in this year's likely rematch between Biden and Trump, the Democrats are going to try and corner the market on it, you could say, early. They've even got the Treasury Secretary on board. Janet Yellen proclaimed that this year, 2024, which just so happens to be her boss's election year, is going to be a very good year for the economy. She says she sees no signs of a looming recession, and she noted that consumer sentiment hit its highest level since July of 2021, which isn't saying much, Janet, according to new numbers put out by the University of Michigan. Yellen has been in Illinois this past week, and now she's in the battleground state of Wisconsin to tour a Milwaukee skilled trades employment program. Biden was likewise just in the area touting his infrastructure investments, which, by the way, has anyone even seen a dime of those trillions aside from the Green New Deal peddlers who won out in it? Just asking. And yet on Wednesday, he received the endorsement of the United Auto Workers Union. Do they just forget about all the massive strikes that happened last year because of auto workers who were mad that Biden was destroying their livelihoods with the green energy transition? Yep, I guess they're just going to conveniently forget about that fact in their endorsement, just like how Biden wants us to forget about inflation. Watch. Over the last year, prices are down on everyday items from a gallon of gasoline to a gallon of milk. And folks are beginning to feel it. However, as the RNC points out, inflation is cumulative, so even if it's growing at a slower pace now, it's still growing. They say that overall prices are up by 17.3 percent, and gas specifically is up by 30 percent since Biden took office, which makes a lot more sense based on what my wallet is telling me. Joining us now to discuss is Jeffrey Tucker, the president of the Brownstone Institute. Jeffrey, thanks for being here tonight. Sure, I like your intuition always, Kara. It's good. Thanks. And so, you know, they say inflation is cooling, but does that mitigate much of the cumulative effect of inflation that we've endured for so many years now? Like a lot of people online compare what they paid for fast food a couple of years ago to what they're paying now for the same meal. And the difference is staggering. I really wish we'd see inflation come down. That would be very nice. Unfortunately, the evidence, the most recent report came in very hot, both CPI and PPI. Uh, sticky prices are still running like 4.9%, something ridiculous. So I've been waiting and waiting for this great decline of prices, but it hasn't happened yet. And uh, over the last four years, we've seen inflation, the last three years, really uh, take off about 20 cents on the dollar. You said 17.5, but there are other measures that are showing 22 cents on the dollar of lost purchasing power. So let's just make it in between and say it's 20, 20 cents, depending on what you buy, that sort of thing. But it's it's bad and it's really slammed the American standard of living. And it, it adds insult to deep injury to have, you know, the mainstream corporate press, you know, backing the Biden administration claiming that, oh, the economy's growing so fast and oh, it's a wonderful economy. Isn't everything wonderful? We've avoided recession and so on and so on. And what you read every day in the newspapers, it gets tiresome and boring and, and terrible. It reminds me of the old days, you know, when I was growing up, when I was a kid. Everybody used to say the Soviet Union had tremendous productivity and look at their GDP and it's going, the economists said this too. All the economics textbooks said this too, based on this national income accounting. I'm, th what they're doing is using the same methods to proclaim the U.S. economy strong that they used to proclaim that the Soviet Union was strong too.